So let's get to this. So we have many new people in, uh, in the Discord channel from all over the world. And most of these people have discovered trips in the last week. So the questions may be uh, pretty basic for those of you who are more, you know, they know who know trips better and have been following us for a, for a while. But uh, any question is, is a good chance for us to clarify things. So. Oh, and by the way, before I start, uh, we have this new system in Discord, which is really amazing. Uh, if you join the channel and uh, you, for instance, ask a question which is answered during this stream, we can send you tokens, we can send you trips. We could even send you Bitcoin and other things. So it works for any cryptocurrency. And this is done simply by sending a message in the Discord channel, which is amazing. Uh, it's like a, a way to send micro payments. Um, I mean, this wasn't possible like, I don't know, a year ago, or I just discovered that. So let me actually try this. I want to show you. You should see where I write stuff, right? Do you see the messages downstairs? And I'm going to do an airdrop. This, this is not, uh, I'm not sending money to anyone. I'm just putting some money there and people can take it. So just to show you how this works. I'm going to airdrop 10 trips. And now many people will click on it and they're going to get a part of the trips, a part of these 10 trips in their online wallet. Uh, already one person, two people clicked. And if I actually call them, I call the people who connected to the they subscribe to a certain role, more people will come to get this airdrop. Four, five, six, you see, these are people clicking and each one of them get a percent of this 10 trips. 10 people, one trips each, 20 people, half trips each, and so on. Most of these are real people. Some are some are bots, but most of them are, are, are real people, I suppose. And uh, another thing which I can do, and that's why I'm telling you, join Discord, click on that red button and get in because it's really fascinating. You won't get rich today, but it's really fascinating to, to experience this. Um, let me send a tip to Ali. Unfortunately, Ali cannot join today. It doesn't work, he said. And I'm gonna say, I sent to him one trips because he asked a nice question. And right now I sent him one trips. No, I didn't make a mistake. Uh, yeah, apologies. Tip. And first you put the name. Ali, one trips. He got one trips. I could have sent $10. I could have sent a Bitcoin. I could have sent anything. Uh, this money goes in an online custodial wallet and then you can transfer it or she can transfer it to a real, a real wallet. So um, this is, uh, look at this, <laughs> Ali is answering thank you by clicking on, on emoticons. This is just a new way to transfer money. It's really, really amazing. Uh, so let's go to the questions. There's a first question from El Artistazo, which is asking if Chips is going to overcome Bitcoin. Uh, well, I won't answer to this one because I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I honestly do not think so, but who knows, right? Give me a second, I forgot to turn on the light. There you are. So, Ali is asking, it's not about trips, but about liquidity provider. What's your pool tokens? I have to be honest, this is not a clear question, Ali, but I'll try to basically explain what happens. Um, well, no, actually, I don't understand this question, but let's, uh, <laughs> let me simply say that the trips tokens are uh, on a couple of exchanges, and both of these are what you call them automatic market making, so AMM. Uh, somebody puts a certain amount of trips and a certain amount of, for, for instance, Ether, and it leaves this there, and people can use them to buy and sell. 
and the person who put this money is called a liquidity provider gets a small commission from from the smart contract okay so we were able to create a market without going through a centralized exchange without begging to get in without paying to get in it's just been done automatically this is one of these cases in which the internet solves a problem and makes companies um i lost the word here uh companies are not needed anymore okay so we can the internet learns to do things which companies do today so we have companies like airbnb or booking and the internet is going to say well we don't need you anymore because now i can do it okay so the internet is getting stronger by the day and we are seeing this we saw this very clearly last summer in exchanges with tokens and we're going to see this in the next years with many other kinds of companies uh, the next question is uh, crypto revival what exchanges are trips on we are on uniswap which is this decentralized exchange uh which is doing i think a few hundred million a day in exchanges and it's got a couple of billion in, in liquidity and recently we added it to honey swap which is exactly like uniswap but on a side chain uh, not on ethereum because ethereum has expensive gas fees so if you are buying and selling hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars you can pay five dollars ten dollars twenty dollars hundred dollars in fees but if you're buying ten dollars worth of trips then you won't do that so we made a copy of these tokens actually that's a very bad word a copy we moved a part of our tokens on the xdai chain so they're not on mainnet anymore they are on that chain they can go up and down but we are not actually duplicating them of course that's not possible and now you can buy or sell trips on the xdai chain on honeyswap spending basically nothing in fees this is really really powerful uh feel free to ask more questions um we got many here but you know if anything comes to your mind just just ask me how do you think about creating trips uh, Zayden asks uh i thought about it because i've done in the beginning of the 2000s my own booking platform before airbnb and that was a lifestyle business and basically like airbnb but it was managed by me only and i could earn money and travel the world then uh, Airbnb came, did something much, much better, of course, and destroyed my business. So I had to go work, basically. <laughs> and I waited for revenge ever since. Uh, and then in 2017, I discovered Ethereum. I had discovered Bitcoin back in 2013, but Bitcoin is not something which is supposed to do more than what it's doing. It's, it's money, basically. Uh, while Ethereum is much more flexible and with ethereum you could conceive finally protocols which replace companies and the first time i heard about these decentralized autonomous organizations called DAOs, i immediately said we have to do the decentralized booking platform and ever since so i started trips and ever since i've been doing working on that it's a very long-term project it's going to take years to get to the point in which we are really we and many other platforms are really impacting the, the industry. But I think the path is very clear. So that's why I started. I've been doing this for forever. And uh, it's a perfect synthesis of what I know about the vacation rental market and what I know about the internet. So it's, it's kind of the perfect job for me, except there's no salary. <laughs> but that's why I did it. Um, could I describe the project in three words? Well, very simply, it's Airbnb, the platform, without Airbnb, the company. Or you could call it open protocols for bookings. It really depends on how precise you want to be. But you imagine that there's an Airbnb.com website where you can do everything you're doing today. It works perfectly. It's beautiful. It doesn't cost 15%. It doesn't cost 3% or 4% or 5% to the host. It doesn't cost 10 to 5% to the to the guest, it costs maybe 5% total or 1% or whatever. And that's one thing. So it's much cheaper. And the second thing that's very, very important, the owner or the host gets reviews. And uh, those reviews are not connected to the platform. 
So today, if you are a host who's been in Airbnb for 10 years and you got 5,000 reviews or 1,000 reviews, whatever, tomorrow you could wake up and get an email in which Airbnb tells you, we have suspended your account for any reason. Um, this happens all the time. So you do not own your reputation. It's borrowed. It's like it's built on their platform, but you have zero power and zero control on that. Trips changes that because when you get a review through Trips, it's written on the blockchain, it's written on the internet, and Trips has no way to edit it or delete it. So, and you're going to use the same reviews on Trips and a hundred more websites, even your own website. And when Trips goes raw or, you know, goes rogue and uh, I get crazy and whatever, I decide you are out of my platform. First of all, I won't be able to decide myself, but let's say, the trips decides that you are out of the platform. Well, you keep your listings, you keep your customers, you keep reviews, and you have one less website, but you are in 100 websites already or 1,000 websites. Today, we live in a monopolistic society. Uh, like there's Booking, there's Airbnb, there's Expedia, and whatever. That's it, right? And uh, so I, I, I'm saying this, there's a cartel. It's, it's probably not even... Uh, explicit, they didn't meet in a dark room to decide this, but it's, it's pretty kind of, you know, they never gonna put down their commissions, for instance. It's, it's, it's like an, an unwritten rule. So we are in a cartel situation, um, olig oligopolistic, if you want, and we're gonna go get into a more open one where uh, people with guests or hosts or companies or property managers, etc., are gonna have uh, much, much more power and we're going to have a more balanced approach. Very good question from unpronounceable name, which is break it, sign, O, zero, whatever, fire. Um, will the TRIPS project be decentralized or is TRIPS just used as a currency for a centralized firm? Beautiful question. Now, um, Trips starts extremely centralized, okay? Uh, because we start from... There's no way to start something like this decentralized today, okay? Uh, extremely centralized. Centralized issue token. Every decision taken by me at the beginning, right? And we started as low, extremely slow, um, progression versus decentralization. And we do this when the technology allows us to do it. Let me give you a few examples. Um, we sh I issued the tokens. I had 63 million of those tokens, right? And until a few months ago, there was no really way to take leave control of those tokens. And then we decided to move them on a multi-sig contract, which basically means those tokens are going to be out of my hands completely, okay? They're going to be in the hands of uh, nine multi-sig owners. But until a few months ago, there was no way to elect them and to make elections, right? But then Snapshot appeared. And so we were able to have elections where people could vote according to the number of tokens they had to vote these multi-sig owners. Uh, some of them are here, like Richard is here, for instance, right? Um, now we're gonna we have these nine uh, multi-sig owners. There's uh, a couple of people from Vacation Rentals. There's the two co-founders of Origin, and there's uh, five people from the Trips community. Um, when we're gonna end this process in which we give them all the tokens, we have done a step in decentralization. What is the next step in this decentralization? Well, the next step is that the money is not in a multi-sig uh, contract where people can go and sign but it's in a smart contract where only votes can move the money. Why don't we do this now? It's too early. You know, you can't see the centralization as a dogma, which you have to have, otherwise it doesn't work. This is not Bitcoin, okay? We're doing something more, more, much more complicated. Bitcoin is extremely simple, okay? So we are gonna go towards the centralization as we, we, see, we see this fit, because what we want, is not a decentralized project. We want a, something which works. So we want protocols which are used and are as decentralized as possible. Let me add you one, so, something more about decentralization. 
People in the vacation rental world do not understand the centralization. So if you tell them it's decided by the community, it's tokenized, they go like, whoa, 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 no, no. Give me a face. Give me somebody who takes care of this. Otherwise, I won't trust you. They will mature. They will learn. They will understand that decentralization, the right kind of decentralization is better. But they need time too. So, guys, we need time. We're not doing Bitcoin. We're not starting decentralized. There's no way this works if you start decentralized. But the, the path is really clear. We're going to be as decentralized as possible in any moment. So uh, what we can promise is like we're not going to drag our feet and we're not going to say we're not going to decentralize this because, well, we want control. No, we don't decentralize it because that breaks everything. Is everything OK? Can you guys still hear me? Let me check YouTube. Oh my God, it's going, it's going on live with the wrong. Okay, well, it's fine. Yep, okay, thanks, Richard. So, always this weird feeling of talking to a screen. So, your feedback is really appreciated. Uh, when trips will be available on CoinGecko, this is a headshot. Uh, CoinGecko is um, a website where you see prices of tokens. Uh, I checked the other day how to get into CoinGecko, and there's a submission form. They ask you questions, and they want to see your social networks and stuff like this. They want to see your liquidity providers, well, sorry, your, your exchanges, basically, etc. And I thought it's a bit too early. We have never really pushed on growing our user base <laughs> because we wanted to have a very high-level discussion. And when you normally open to many people, the discussion goes lower, and we were not really ready for that. But we started now. So we've been growing in Twitter. We're going to grow in Facebook. And uh, and when we feel that we have enough momentum, we're going to submit to CoinGecko. What is the point of being in CoinGecko? Well, well CoinGecko is used by many systems, including TIPCC, the one where we leave tips here, to draw the price, to, to get the price. So it's a very good place to be. But we're going to supply when uh, apply when, when it makes works, when it makes sense, sorry. Where do you see trips? This is materialistic from UK. Oh yeah, last night before sleeping, I asked everybody to put a, a, a flag on their name, which then I realized is not the name, but they say this is status. I haven't figured this out yet in Discord. And so now I know the materialistic is from UK, or at least it says so. Uh, it was very effective because I promised one trip for anybody who does it. So everything is much more powerful when you can actually uh, do a micro tip uh, it's, it's incredible how reactive people get with this. And I, I understand because you get one trips, it's worth 15 cents of a dollar right now. Maybe one day it's going to worth a dollar or maybe more. Who knows, right? So you, you get it. It's a very low effort way to get some tokens and to get expo exposure to, to the whole blockchain thing, right? So where do you see trips in three to five years? And what do you think are the hardest challenges you face along the journey? What new features or strategies do you plan to implement in the future to secure your place on the hotel industry? Great, great question, Materist. OK. First of all, three, five years time is the right time frame. Uh, if you ask me, where do you see yourself in three months, six months? I don't know. Not, not much farther on the way. But three, five years. Oh, man, three, five years. A lot of things going to happen in three, five years, three to five years. Definitely. Um, where do I see myself? Well, let me put it this way. When I sat down to write a white paper in June 2017 or July, whatever, and I, I started from a position in which there was Airbnb and we wanted to, book, to do the decentralized Airbnb, I immediately went for a booking portal. We call this OTA, online travel agency in the industry. And so I started writing the white paper and I kind of tried to see how can we decentralize this how can we decentralize payments? How can we decentralize reviews, etc. Right? So uh, I conceived this one big monolithic block, which is an OTA, but it's decentralized. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I changed my mind this year. I changed my mind this year because I realized 
first of all, that mm, it's gonna take even longer than I was planning. I was looking at three years, and three years are now, and we haven't done much. The whole industry hasn't done anything actually in terms of uh, marketplaces. Uh, we've seen incredible innovation at the infrastructure level. We've seen use cases in tokenization, uh, which tells you that blockchains are great for anything they can see. So a blockchain can see tokens beautifully. But anytime you have to see something which is not on the blockchain, it goes like, oh, I don't know what's happening. And think about the oracles which need to see the prices and how they open all these uh, attack vectors uh, where exchanges or farming uh, protocols make uh, easy you know, targets for hackers. Okay, so when the blockchain has to deal with stuff which is not on the blockchain, it freaks out. And we need to find ways to, you know, co connect the real world with the blockchain. So what did I realize last summer? I realized that before knowing the OTA, the platform, we need to have all the protocols running and mature. So I decided to go first on specific um, independent protocols. We need protocols for reviews, don't we? So we're going to do a protocol which manages reviews. For instance, we have one uh, grant going on on Gitcoin, which is called Open Reviews. And that gives the possibility to a host to go on a website, like let's say Uniswap. So it's, it's web-based, but it's decentralized. Put their Airbnb listing and the system will scrap his or her Airbnb uh, website, web page listing and get the reviews save them on IPFS and the blockchain. So basically making a backup of those reviews. This is nothing, it's not enough for, for having an OTA, but it's a first step. So first of all, you backed up your reviews. You got an incredibly important service because now even if Airbnb, Airbnb's algorithm decides to kick you out, well, your reviews are safe this time, right? Uh, another thing we are discussing now with uh, Gnosis, Gnosis or, or Gnosis, I don't know how to um, pronounce this. It's one of the, earliest blockchain projects is the one which is offering the Gnosis safe, so the multi-sig uh, software for keeping billions of dollars today. Uh, they contacted us and they want us, you know, we're discussing with them to build a protocol for escrow payments. So we're going to do, hopefully, a protocol for escrow payments in which if you are a, an owner with a website and you want to accept cryptocurrencies, well, you don't need to go to a company. You don't need to pay anyone. You just embed a piece of code and you have access to the whole beautiful, you know, incredible power um, escrow payments of the blockchain. So you're going to be able to accept cryptocurrencies. There's going to be, um, sorry, I see a delay. You still, you still hear me, right? I saw spinning stuff around. So let me, let me see if I can hear. Yes, okay, thank you. Let me just take away the Bluetooth and see what happens. Okay, so uh, again, to the payments. So people will be able to embed a normal piece of code in their WordPress page or any kind of website they're using and accept crypt cryptocurrencies. The money is escrow, so it doesn't go to the host directly. It goes only after the, the guest says everything is fine, exactly as Airbnb does. And there's even um, this, uh, claiming a dispute management layer in which something goes wrong. Some people will, in a decentralized way, judge on the on the issue, maybe with Kleros, which is a website or a blockchain project which does this, maybe internally, we will see. So we're gonna do all the protocols. And each of these protocols are, are going to be used independently to solve a specific issue and to improve the life of hosts and guests now, right? And as these protocols get better, as they get attacked, as they get, learn how to um, repel these attacks, so when they are mature, we take them and we put them all together and we have an OTA. And the next day, somebody will do a second OTA, right? So we're going to have trips on Monday and the next day, somebody's going to have trips too or something else. And in a month, it's going to be 100. So that's how I see this going. And 
timing is really hard. You know, we haven't really solved. Imagine we're building a city here, right? We you're asking me how you see your shopping mall. Well, they're still putting the water and the electricity and it's still we still have scalability issues. We still have scalability issues on Ethereum, right? So there's still not enough water. And maybe some people, you know, from some countries where you see the building this incredible, beautiful uh, skyscrapers, and then you, you discover that the infrastructure is not is not ready for that. Um, is the same situation. So until the infrastructure is mature, we can't really plan any, you know, give you any timing. But we are talking of years, definitely. I'm going to skip Y trips, a bit too general. I already answered to Sasuke. OK. Okay. Let me see if there's some questions here. No, perfect. Okay. Ask questions in the in the Q and A. No problem. So, um, Felipe P ninety four is asking, what is the differential of trips? So, how do you differentiate yourself from? I assume. Airbnb, all right, or booking. Um, Airbnb is the perfect company of Web2, right? Let me do the Web1, Web2, Web3 story here. Web1 is the first web uh, where anybody will build a website and it will be very basic and people will just read it, not really interact with it. There was no like button. There was, you know, if you had any kind of interaction, it would reload the whole page, etc. So it was the, the internet of the people, the nerds, um, and it was like a read-only internet. You would read it, right? Uh, in our space, HomeAway was the king. Uh, it was the only company on the stock exchange, and they they were basically a listing site, like you know a Craigslist with specific specific for for apartments and houses and villas, right? That's Web One. Then Web Two happened. Web Two is let's say. You can click on stuff and the reaction is immediate, so you can actually interact. So you can actually write comments very easily on, on Facebook. Um, people were only reading Web 1 and they are writing and reading on Web 2. It's the web of read, write, right? Where everybody becomes a publisher. So Airbnb fits into this perfectly. Uh, it's born in 2008 when Web 2 is you know, mature. And it grew the way Web2 works. So centralized corporation, uh, venture capital money, uh, grabbing as much as you can, creating a moat, all this startup um, uh, ethics, if you want to call it. And that's Airbnb. This is Web2. Um, Booking.com is Web1, which manages to get into Web2. So it's born much, much before, 94, if I'm not wrong. And it actually succeeds in getting to Web2, right? So every time there's a big shift from web one, two, or three, somebody stays behind. Like HomeAway failed completely. HomeAway didn't understand web two and they failed. They're still there. They've been bought um, by Expedia for $4 billion, but they really suffered. Maybe now they started kind of, you know, getting there and they were kind of lucky with the COVID-19 pandemic because people stopped going to the cities. They went to the villas and houses and that's what where they have the market. But they are catching up on Web 2 now, but we're moving to Web 3 already, right? And I don't see them catching up on Web 3. Now, who will catch up on Web 3? Airbnb is on the good way, is on the good path. Airbnb has already um, tried to give shares to their hosts, which is basically tokenizing their company. They failed because the SEC didn't reply or accept. Uh, for a couple of weeks ago, they decided to build a fund where they put their shares and they're going to use the shares for the host, which is a Web2 attempt to do tokenization, right? The right way to do this on Web3 is you put tokens out there and you give tokens to people, right? But they can't do that right now. Maybe they'll do it in the future. So will Airbnb adapt to Web3? Well, we don't know. They're very young. They're very smart. I'm sure they're going to try. Let's see. Usually, most companies 
who succeed in a big iteration are the native ones. And Trips is a native Web3 company, right? We are born with the concept of a Web3, and we are going to represent exactly what Web3 is all about. We don't have investors to explain why now they have to give shares to people too, to explain why the hosts have to make money too, and not only you know money meaning, meaning getting parts of the shares, and then not only be you know exploited and 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 be taken advantage of, right? We don't have this kind of problem. This is understood. A platform is made by people who use the platform, right? These are the people who have to profit for that, not only external investors. So, what was your question, by the way? Oh, the differential. Okay. Yeah. So the differential, in short, we are a Web3 company. Well, see, wrong. We're not even a company here. We are a Web3 project. Okay. Which is another big difference with Web3. There's not companies anymore. There's communities. Communities first. And if you come into Discord, you see what's happening there. That's what that's the company of the future. That's the corporation of the future. How that's how it looks like. It's no more uh, a few people in a building and all the rest are, are disconnected. Uh, I need to take a fast break, I'm sorry. Let's stop it. <laughs> Joking. Uh, off. Uh, can you hear me? You should be. You should hear me, right? Please confirm. Everything seems fine. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Alessia. Okay. So, so uh, yeah, that, that's a bit what I was saying. Um, we are native. Web three native. Okay. Prussia, Prussia. How will trips get tourists, 99% uh, of who have no experience with crypto at all, to use it instead of Airbnb or other alternatives? Great question. That's one of the questions which are asked the most. And I tell you, we're going to get people when people are ready. And we're going to get people when the, the software is ready. It's a bit like asking in 1995 when everybody was um, booking through travel agencies, right? They would get, go in a travel agency, that was a technology at the time. Uh, go in a travel agency, sit in a chair, the lady on the other side had a, a screen and it was she was booking for you, right? And then somebody comes in and say, hey, I got an idea. Have you heard about this new thing, the internet, right? You can, um, you can book online, people can go on their computer at home and they can, and people say, what are you talking about? People don't have computers. Uh, people want to talk to people how they're going to pay. And you know the answer is like, no, now it's not going to happen. It's going to happen later when people start having computers, having smartphones, learning how to do. And the result is that the travel agencies are dead and everything happens online. Same thing here. Today, no one will book on trips, right? If tomorrow, if today we had a, a working Web3 platform, very few people would, um, would use it, right? So it's going to happen, it's going to happen, right? That's all. Uh, it's like we're ready for when this happens. We're going to be ready for when this happens. That's all. And, and when this happens, why people would go on, on trips and not on Airbnb or booking? And these answers also evolved in time, right? At the beginning, I was thinking, well, because it's cheaper. You save 10%, right? But then, you know, I went around the world um, trying to tell people, uh, about this this project, and I realized that a minority of people would go all the way to change platform to book a place just for saving ten percent. You are putting your you're risking a holiday, like three days in Paris for ten percent. Are you getting extra risk? You won't you won't do that. You will stay on the platform you always used. 
even if the new platform is as good as the old platform. And before we get there, it's going to take a long time. So why will people start using this, this um, booking in this way? Well, I think today, and I may change my mind in a, in a few years, is because they're forced to. Like, if you are a property manager and you realize that you're being exploited by these OTAs and you are all your business is at risk and you need to get direct bookings, and this is happening today. After COVID-19, everybody wants direct bookings because they understand that if the OTA has to throw you under the bus, they will throw you under the bus. And Airbnb has thrown under the bus many, many people, right? So people want direct bookings, not guests. Guests are perfectly happy on the OTAs, on the platforms. But the supply side, those with the keys in their hand, they say, hell no, hell no. August, I'm always full, always full. I'm not going to pay 10, 15, 20% more to get your booking. You come direct. And I've seen this, you know, I've seen this happening already. If you are sure you are full, you're trying to get direct bookings, right? And what they're going to try to do is to say, okay, certain dates, I'm going to get only direct bookings or trips or other decentralized platforms, which cost me 1%, 2%, 5%, and where I have control on my reviews and et cetera. You want to book, you go through these platforms. You want to book, you go direct. You want to go on booking or Airbnb, go. You won't find my house and my villa, right? And of course, when this is really small, who cares? People will still go through uh, the OTAs. But as the supply side becomes more aware of the opportunity and aware of the risks of centralized OTAs, you as a guest will find you will find yourself in a position in which you say, okay, do I want it safe or do I want choice? All right. Do I want to book not the best option for me, but I feel safe because I always been booking on the on, on these OTAs, or do I want more option? And as, as new people, young people come in who has never used Airbnb before, their mom has used Airbnb, their father has used Airbnb, and that's an old centralized system. There's not even tokenized. It's like, mom, they're not even giving me tokens? What the hell? What? Points? Genius? No, no, I want tokens. You know, as the new generations come, come in, they're going to book on this system. So again, it's a, it's a generational change here. Nothing's going to happen very fast. Um, but that's why people are going to come. No option. And in 10 years, 20 years from now, your grandmother's going to book on Airbnb and the, the young people are going to book on the centralized platforms, right? I see Richard writing and now I'm scared. Richard is an expert. <laughs> Go ahead, Richard. Okay. So, another question. Skip from Indonesia. I love Indonesia, Skip. I lived in Bali and I traveled extensively, actually in Lombok and Java only, but I couldn't make it farther, but yeah. I love Indonesia. Um, why TRIPS is on X day chain? Why not an Ethereum network? Work. Um, Trips is born on the Ethereum network. Our first token uh, launched on um, a, in January 2018 is on the mainnet, and just recently we we moved a bit of them on XDAI on XDAI uh, chain because of the fees, right? So it's on both. We even uh, tested um, Serum, if I'm not wrong. That's the that's the name of the, the other chain on Solana. And there's a few sales order on the serum for trips. So we are open. We are experimenting uh, constantly. We want to be on the cutting edge on everything which is happening in the blockchain. So just to go to Sky question, how is trips different from my tokens? As a token is not different. Um, well, every token is different in a way. So. TRIPS is um, a proof of work token in the sense, not in the Bitcoin sense. First of all, it's, it's an ERC20, right? So it's a token which runs on the Ethereum mainnet. Uh, but it's a proof of work in the sense that we never sold them and we never done an ICO. We could have done it. Remember June 2017, ICO craze. I had a white paper. I could 
I had a website. I, I could just go with the ICO. I said, no, let's do this properly. Let, let's write a, a white paper. Uh, and I wrote the white paper. And it took me a, a few weeks. And then it took a few months to really, you know, um, study the white paper completely from the beginning with, with uh, about 20, 30 people uh, in Discord. You can still, still see these discussions in Italian in our Discord. Uh, and by the by the time we were ready, the ICO craze was was over, so we never we never sold our tokens. So these tokens have been given to people who help the project. So people will come, help, work on it, and get tokens. That's one particular aspect. And just since June last year, sorry, June this year, people have been able to buy them on the exchanges. And just you know, for the last couple of weeks, we've been giving them, airdropping them in our Discord. And giving them for work too, you know, when you are sharing, um, uh, like the man, the meme, people got money for the meme. Uh, people got money because they shared uh, on Twitter and, and so on. People will get money today for the questions. And I say money, sorry, I mean trips, but you know, because they can be exchanged uh, in Ether or XDAI and then in, in in dollars. It's basically like money, right? Uh, Trips is the best cryptocurrency. True or false? Well, it's false. <laughs> Sorry, it's not the best cryptocurrency. Uh, it's be best, best for me, probably, because, you know, it's my thing, but uh, no. And plus, uh, careful with best in blockchains. Is the, you know, is Ethereum better than Bitcoin? Wrong question. Wrong question. They do different things, right? So every token or crypto um, has or does something it has to does it well to do it well that's all okay crypto gold can trips keep up with scalability and transaction speed of other coins and how will this be achieved uh it's a token it runs on ethereum it runs on xday xdai um we don't do this we don't do scalability we don't do speed you know we, we try to be in a way we solve this problem by being on several uh, blockchains at the same time, right? Without duplicating the, the trips. And this, this is happening. The, the ones we put on Serum are not new trips, are the same. It's like we, we move them from two different universes, but the total amount is the same. So that's a way to say we, we are going to be like in XDAI, we are faster, but less safe because XDAI is less safe, right? On Ethereum, is extremely safe, but slower and more expensive. And so on. Doomrat. Will Trips have his own mainnet, mainnet instead of being on either next die? Uh, I would say no. Um, when you create your own blockchain, you are effecti effectively, effectively creating a centralized database, which looks like a decentralized database. Because if you have you know, you launch it as 10 nodes, it's you and your friends. It is basically a database. You, you could have done this as a centralized database. And then you try to decentralize in the same way as trip, trips would try to decentralize. But by the way, but until you are decentralized, you are just a database, right? So why would trips do his own blockchain? I don't think it's worth. We're building, let's say we're building a, a, a building in the city. Why would we worry about the, the creating a new city and go out in the desert and do Las Vegas ourselves. Somebody else is doing that, right? The infrastructure is being done by other people. We're not going to do this. We're not going to get there. Where do you see trips in five years and are the answers in my wallet? <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Will you ever pull the rug? Yeah. Okay. Good question. Good question. Uh, for those who are not expert experts in, in, in rug pulling, and we are experts now after this rug pulling summer, especially if uh, all of you who have experienced the, the emotions and of the sushi swap and other things, uh, pull the rug. It means, well, let's see how we could pull the rug today. Uh, to, today we could do it, right? Uh, people start believing in trips. They start putting money in the liquidity pools. 1,000 trips, sorry, 3,000 trips, 1 ether. 30,000 trips, 10 ether, right? That's kind of the proportion. They put the money there, and the pool grows, and it gets to a million, right? 
I'm still sitting on 62 million trips. So one day I wake up, I say, I'm tired of this. I want to go to Bali. I want to go to wherever. Uh, I sell a million trips or whatever, as much as I can on this, um, on the Uniswap. Uh, the price crashes. The liquidity is gone. Well, actually, no, it's not gone, but there's only trips and there's no more um, ether. And I pull the rag. It means I pull the rag from under your feet. You burn, you lose all your money again, and bye bye. And then you're going to look for me in Bali, but actually, I'm not going to go to Bali. I'm going to go to Lombok, right? <laughs> Today is possible because, for instance, for right now, the, the trips are still in my hands. Luckily for you and luckily for me, there's not enough money in the liquidity. Uh, if I do that, I won't get rich. So I want to have, I want to lose control of the trips tokens before this gets big, right? Now, it goes to these nine, nine multi-sig owners. Uh, I, can pull, I cannot pull the rug anymore, but they can. They need six signatures. So you're going to look at these six, nine people and say who they are. There's five from TRIPS, there's two from the industry, and there's two from Origin Protocol. And you try to see if they could make a collusion. Would they make collusion today? They wouldn't. It's little money. Uh, if there's 10 millions, would they collude? Well, the chances are, are higher. Now you're going to have to wonder, will Richard, who is uh, one of the signers, will Richard burn his reputation for that amount of money? How much money could he make? He could make 100,000. Now he won't do it. Six months later, he could make 10 million. Hmm, Richard. Right? <laughs> you never know. So at that point, we're going to try to move the money to smart contracts, which can only be moved by signing. So you see, it's, it's a progression. See, Richard already promised he's gonna do it. So <laughs> it's better we move we move as fast as we can before we grow. Now, what can happen is that for any reason, or let's say that there's a bull run. Like, let's say the situation is that there's the money has already been moved to the to the safe, right? So I lost control. Let's say a week from now, and then there's a bull run. Bitcoin is is going up. Ethereum is going up. Everybody starts buying tokens right and left. They go in, they see trips, they, they, they see, oh, yeah, I'm going to buy trips. And trips becomes big. And we are still in the phase of the nine multi-sig owners. Then we have a problem because there is a collusion, poss poss collusion possibility. I think it's very low because you need six people. And there's no six people who know each other in this. But it's still possible. So we're going to have to quickly maybe build a new um, multi-sig saves or put it in a smart contract. And we're going to have to analyze the situation of the, the, the technology at the time, right? Because it may be less safe to have a smart contract than to have the multi-sig owner. So we'll see. It's an arms race. You never get there. It's a progression. So pull rock, highly unlikely, but still possible. You should worry if trips goes, grows faster, too fast, and we, we cannot catch up with the security. Let's go to Richard. Richard is a, a veteran of the vacation rental industry. He's um, our one of our uh, advisors and he's one of the elected multi-sig owners. And he's from UK. So your comments on this. OTA, OTAs live by margin and a mode of brand. Loyalty and habit. The current trend is to give something back, membership, loyalty points, and discounts, offering and accumulating transaction asset, trips. Oh, sorry, there was a dot there. So the current trend is to give something back, like they give you membership, loyalty points, discounts, etc. Offering and accumulating transaction asset, trips, is a powerful message as the world of fintech digitizes. It just needs to be easier for the general public, but it will come. Okay. The mod concept, Richard, is extremely interesting, right? And if any of you has followed the saga of Uniswap versus SushiSwap last summer, you will know that the mod is not in the code, right? Let me quickly explain what happened. Uniswap had, I think, $1 billion in the liquidity, and they made this announcement, which is we raised money from venture capital. I think they raised $12 million, which is not much, right? And some people freaked out because they said, okay, this is a protocol which is completely, you know, it doesn't cost any money. There's a 0.3% commission 
which goes to the liquidity provider, so to the people. There's no venture capital. There's no people profiting from it, apart from the people who use it, right? And then it's so pure, it's so beautiful. Like Uniswap is like Web3 as it should be, right? And it's also secure. It's been done by a guy who's great, is very professional, etc. A guy and then a team, right? But then, 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 then the VC come in. Oh, VC. The sharks are coming in. They want to, they're going to make money out of it. So a guy says, let's take, let's make a copy of, of Uniswap. They copy the code. And the code is there to be copied. It's not stolen, right? It's open source. Copy the code. And basically tells people, let's do something like Uniswap without VCs. Let's make the money ourselves. And he, I won't go too much into detail, but it allows people to move the liquidity easily from Uniswap to SushiSwap. It goes from, Uniswap goes from 1 billion to half billion, and SushiSwap, which was born three days ago, goes from zero to half a billion, right? And then the story goes on, and I won't tell you, but it, it's incredibly interesting. But what happens? Like, the mod wasn't the code, and the mod wasn't the liquidity, right? The mod in Web3 is the community. By mod, we mean what protects a certain project. Everything is in the community, right? So trips will write code, and it's going to be open source code. An origin protocol is writing code, and it's open source protocol, open source code, right? And Ethereum is writing code, and it's open source code. Everything is open source. Uh, so trips does something well. People get in, they get the tokens, and everything works well. And then somebody else comes in and says, I'm going to do trips too. I'm going to make it exactly the same. But uh, I don't know, hosts will make more money because they're going to get more tokens. Some hosts will leave. OK, what's actually going to happen? They're not going to leave because they're going to leave their listings online, but they're going to move liquidity. So I'm seeing a possibility of liquidity attacks where an OTA is going to say, give me your August or give me the your liquidity and you get a token in exchange so the otas are not going to fight about listings anymore because one listing will be many but they're going to fight about liquidity sorry availability so availability attacks and uh how will a project defend itself i think by finding the right balance between how much every player gets and if you see it away from the perspective of, of trips, right? If you see it from the top, from the perspective of people, it's going to be great because you're going to have, the, you are a host or a guest, it doesn't matter. You're going to have many projects competing to make you happy, right? And nobody capturing you at all, right? So for the people, it's going to much it's going to be much better. Trips has this advantage of being the first, right? But if we lose control of what we're doing, if we start being like you know, too man, too much host friendly, then the guests will be attracted by other companies, by other projects, right? And then there's gonna be all the like let's say Airbnb could tokenize. I don't see that as an impossibility for Airbnb to launch an Airbnb token. And by the time this happens, if the market is not mature enough, they could fall for tokens which are actually not giving much back. Or if the market is mature, Airbnb is going to be forced to launch a real token. And now we get those tokens. And maybe they're going to do like Uniswap did, airdrop tokens, which are worth $3 each because you've been in Airbnb for years. That would be fantastic, right? We are not here to make trips a success and to make me the next guy on Forbes, right? If Airbnb fixes the problems by itself and makes a fair platform, we are fine. Okay, everybody's fine. But they won't do it. <laughs> they won't do it. They won't do it because it's too hard. Uh, they have to do the IPO right now. And the IPO is basically saying, okay, anybody who's invested before, the people who had the right to invest before, so only the institutional investors, now you're making money, guys. The employees... Now you make your money. Now we're gonna put this money. Some may say we're gonna drop this money on the general public. And according to the way it goes, if it goes down, it's been basically a rug pull. 
If it goes well, it's been great. So let's see. It all depends on how long, for how many years or decades, Airbnb is going to be uh, a success, a successful company or not, right? Let's see. Once upon a time, competing with existing booking platforms needs some requirements, such a large community and public awareness. Also using tokens as a medium for peer-to-peer -peer contracts needs a stable currency. How trips gain these goals? Um, regarding the growth in the community, I think we've seen what's happening in these days in, in Discord. We growing. We grew from 600 to 1,600 people in, in a matter of, I think, a week or two. I don't know. The time is warped. I don't know. It's been a year. <laughs> <laughs> you have to remember, I have a feed in blockchain and I have a feed in vacation rentals and vacation rentals is like, it's not moving. It's, it's like everything is like, nobody is, is moving, right? And, and blockchain is like, you, you, so it's very hard to keep track of things, right? So let's say it's been two, two weeks with Discord um, when we started inviting people from this amazing project tip.cc. And that's how you do it. You can get from 1,000 to 10,000 in a matter of months. Again, you've seen what happened with SushiSwap, right? Or other projects. Growth is immediate. Once you find the right balance, you're, you're going more than exponential, right? So we are positioning ourselves. We are floating on a surfboard. And we know that the wave is coming. We are getting ready for that wave. While the others are on the beach, and they don't know about the wave. So the wave comes, it's a huge wave, it's a tsunami, and we are gonna ride it and they're gonna be crushed. That's a bit, the metaphor is a bit strong, but we know this is happening. Now we've been breeding this stuff for, I've been breeding blockchain for seven years. And many of you have been breeding this for two, three years. We know this thing is coming, there's no doubt, right? So we are positioning while the others are still looking, oh, Bitcoin, this is for drug dealers, isn't it, right? So we have this incredible advantage over them because we know what's happening. We understood it, right? That's for the part about how to grow. The public is going to realize. We don't need to go there and convince them. We won't be able to, right? Uh, regarding stable currency, well, again, you know, when we started this in 2017, oh, you, you want to accept Ether, but Ether is worth $200 today and 1000 tomorrow and maybe 100 later. And then... And you had to put in the white paper all this way that you, you get Ether and you, or you get your own token and you exchange it for fiat and you keep to kind of guarantee that $1,000 in June is $1,000 in when they get released in September. And then I just said, you know what? The blockchain is going to solve this. And then the blockchain solved that. You know? How? Stable coins. USDT first, DAI later, etc. So stable coins are the solution. A DAI is worth a dollar today and is worth a dollar in a year, right? So you accept DAI. That's it. Uh, most of the problems, again, it's, it's like surfing, right? We, are not, we don't have to make the wave. The wave is happening. We don't have to solve every problem we have. We have to understand when they're going to be solved. So when is the liquidity, sorry, the volatility problem going to be solved, it's been solved two years ago. And we didn't have to lift a finger, right? If we had tried to solve it ourselves by, you know, issuing our own stable coin, you know, that's something, that's an industry. Stable coins are an industry. You, you can't build every industry in the world to create a, a, an environment. You, you do your own thing and you wait for the other things to, to mature. Francesco, where can I spend trips over some location in Italy and outside? Francesco is, 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 a, is a guy, he's been with us three years, he's in the core of trips and he knows the answer to the question, so he's just giving an assist. And uh, the ask is like, you, you can spend trips by booking apartments. So we already have um, maybe two or 300 apartments in Italy, houses and villas, who said, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm happy to accept, you know, trips, uh, as a partial payment that was done two years ago. So imagine what's going to be when, when this goes mainstream. So you're going to be able to use trips for booking places um, pretty soon. We just don't have the platform right now. But again, it could be that you're going to be able to use them through direct booking websites because our protocol accepts trips, right? 
Uh, Kreb, is there any plans for liquidity incentives like yield farming, for example, a honeycomb pool where people can earn honey for depositing the trips, uh, XDAI LP tokens? Let me, <laughs> if somebody who's never been in crypto comes in and reads this, he's going to punch you in the face, Kreb. Say, what the hell are you talking about? Get a job. Okay. So <laughs> let me, let me, you know, kind of explain a little bit this. So, how do we push people to put more money into these pools so there's more uh it's easier to exchange trips without changing the price too much today if you buy a thousand dollars worth of trips the price is going is, is going to go from 18 cents to 35 i don't know depends right because there's not much money there the pool is small so you make a wave and the wave moves everything we need to make the pool bigger so if you if you if you jump in it doesn't move too much right how do you do that well there's a system which Krab is, is mentioning, it's called yield farming. Let, let me explain this to you. And this has been the whole a whole craze last summer, and is and now is, is kind of a stable, not stable, but we we'll say like pretty established way to convince people to put money into these pools. You put trips and ether, and you leave them there, and you earn your commission, right? And then you leave them there and you get one token in exchange. This is a liquidity token which represents this too, right? It's like a, a piece of paper which says, thank you, you left 1,000, 2,000 trips and one ether. Here's your receipt. You take this receipt, which is a liquidity token, liquidity pool token, and you deposit it. And while you deposit it, you get more trips or you get other stuff, right? Liquidity farming, yield farming, right? That's the concept. How do we do that? Well, we created um, a honeycomb pool already, XDAI trips, and there's a little bit of liquidity there, but there's no reward. Nobody's giving you anything for that. And a couple of days ago, Honey uh, contacted us to see if we can do if we can do a farm there. Now they offered uh, to do a farm with Honey and trips, but we want to do an XDAI and trips liquidity, it makes more sense. So we're discussing this thing. So yeah, we definitely are aware of this possibility. Uh, we need more critical mass, but you know, we get in there. I hope crap this answers your question. Okay, that was Prussia answering. Let me go to new questions. Guys, ask questions. And oh, let me let me launch the call to action again. Oh, I think we are already over one hour. You know what? Just you know, it, I'm gonna go ahead. So if you have to go, you go. But there's many questions I really want to answer. This video is gonna be probably on YouTube if, if the recording goes well. So we're gonna refer to it in the next week. So I want to answer every question. How many are there? Well, you should be able to to survive. Let me go to the next question. Alessia. Alessia, how will TRIPS governance increase its credibility and guarantee payment security for greater mass adoption of the project in the future world of travel? Uh, okay, the webinar ends here. I didn't understand the question because I'm tired. <laughs> so let me let me read it again. So how will the governance increase the credibility? Uh, yeah, you know what? Governance decreases credibility with the normal people, no coiners. Because I was mentioning, when you tell them, yeah, there's no board, like it's not me deciding, it's it's the you know, masses is the mob. They're like, what? So no, but we have to go in that way, in that direction anyway, because the world is going that direction. The fact that most people don't understand this, well, they will understand later, right? So governance will not increase credibility with the, uh, I don't like the word no coiners, but let's call them no coiners. But it does increase credibility with the crypto world, which is where decisions are taken, which is the world, the world of the future, right? So we're going to try, as I was saying, to decentralize governance as much as we can. And payment security, well, that's a protocol issue, right? Uh, it, the smart contract is a few lines of code. You launch a smart contract, 
And if you may, if there's money in it and there's a bug, somebody will steal this money, right? This is going. This happens. It's guaranteed, right? Uh, then you fix this bug. You launch a new more a new smart contract, and and then the bug visa goes away, and then you can move a lot of money without you know with hundred percent security. That's that's where it goes in terms of of security. And then if something goes wrong in the booking and you need somebody to decide if the guest has to get the money back, for instance, well then you have the centralized governance, the centralized dispute management. And that's a whole new industry which is nascent. So, when are we gonna get to a point where the you know you're gonna book a place in this way and you know you're fine? Who knows, right? But that's the way it's gonna go. Francesco is is going in the corner, crosses the ball in the center, and Tom with the head, I go and make a goal. Travala versus trips. What are the differences, even if both begin with? T. Okay. Travala has taken a different approach. They made a centralized platform like Booking. Travala is more like Booking than Airbnb. There's hotels too, right? Uh, much easier to understand, much easier to raise capital because venture capital understands this model. It's all about making money to the investors with a little bit of decentralization uh, in the form of tokens instead of membership points right you get more discounts if you have more tokens so you are incentivized in uh keeping your tokens in staking right so and i assume they're trying to decentralize as much as they can so their approach is more uh traditional it may be the right approach today is a very centralized uh, platform which actually works there is a platform you can actually book with them uh, do you save money with them? Sometimes yes, sometimes not. I made tests, so sometimes you save money, sometimes not. Where do they get the listings? From Booking.com and other companies. So extremely centralized. It doesn't solve the main, the underlying problems we have today, uh, It, but it starts decentralizing a little bit. So not Web3 native, I would say. In, even if in their marketing, they say they're a blockchain company, uh, they are a company using blockchain. That's a bit more, maybe more precise in terms. And they are a competitor if you want. So whatever I say is, you know, it's difficult to judge on this. Uh, but, you know, they may have taken the right approach. We haven't done anything in these three years. We haven't built any uh, booking platform yet, right? They did. So it's all about about when you want to use these softwares you want to have something today you can try travala it could be an improvement on booking in my opinion it's not booking is still better uh, i've used i tried to use travala to make bookings uh, the only booking i could do on the blockchain was actually with lock trip a year ago or something and i saved money but you know as a, as a person who books booking was still better Right and okay, it's not fair to say that to say this. Of course, it was still better. It's still early, so they are different. Trips is waiting for the technology to be ready to give solutions, and Travala has not waited and they gave solutions today. And, and you judge, you have to judge by yourself. One of the roles of Trips is to teach you and to understand how the how Web Three works, and then you have to take decisions in judging this company. It's going to be many more, like like trips, like Travala. You have to learn to judge them. Don't don't rely on anybody telling you. Because then all, you're also going to go to invest. You're going to buy trips. You're going to buy tokens from Travala or, or others. Uh, the best thing is that you learn, you know, the basics. So it's a great place here to learn the basics, too. Mucha gracia. Do you expect to get staking on the other side too, like CoinStake? I don't know. I don't know what CoinStake is. I'm sorry. So I can't answer. Cyborg, what's different? What's different this time that was missing Airbnb other than owning a governance token? Well, I think I, I answered to this. Uh, it's about who has control. Today, Airbnb has a complete control on the host's life, too much to be healthy for society in general, I would say. Um, trips gives back control to everybody else, except, you know, it's a win-win. The only ones who lose are investors, but because we are all investors in projects like Trips, we can win again. So 
I just think it's a fairer model. Uh, why do you think crypto is the best solution when fiat is really, readily available for general masses? Today, crypto is not better. Today, crypto is a worse mean of um, exchange because nobody has it. If anybody, everybody had Bitcoin, it would still be a bad one because Bitcoin is too volatile. Same for Ether. If everybody had DAI, that would be better. So the technology is there, it's not being adopted, right? CapEx, uh, what collaborations are you carrying out and how will you instruct hotels, bed and breakfast, etc., to use this service? Uh, I replied to this question by talking about protocols. We're going to build these open protocols and they're going to be there, like Uniswap is there. And it's there. Use it. We don't have control on this anymore. So if you think you're a hotel and you think you want to start accepting cryptocurrencies or you want to back up your reviews, use the protocol. Uh, and it's going to be a long process, but it it solves a problem you, you have today, now. Uh, Spency, what are couple goals for Trace by the end of the year? End of the year is soon. Uh, grow the community. We we are an Italian project. We have, uh, we've been Italian for a long time and then we decided to open up to the world and also to a younger demographic. And I think we found a way right now with uh, with Tip CC and with the possibility to do this kind of airdrops and pay trips, etc. So we want to grow to a number where anybody who comes in doesn't see 500 people in Twitter, but sees 5,000. Uh, doesn't see uh, 500 people, 1,000 people in Facebook, but sees 10,000. So we want to grow. We always resist like, trying to show numbers, like vanity numbers, but now is the time to do that. Okay, so and because we found a way to do this. And if you think about it, we find a way to grow our community without giving money to Facebook, right? First of all, because Facebook doesn't want our money. They, <laughs> they ban cryptocurrency advertisement uh, or Google, I don't know, whatever. Uh, secondly, why pay them if we can pay people directly, right? It's the perfect solution in my opinion. So, Spenzi, growth. Can I buy N-word pass with trips? No idea what you're talking about. So, I'll check it out. Uh, mascot, does trips will have proof of stake or DeFi? Sounds like flashbacks. flashbacks. Proof of stake is a technology which run on which blockchains are run. We are a higher level. Not in, not in the sense that we are better, but we are the application on the infrastructure. We are the website. Proof of stake is the server in a way, right? So is that, it's like asking Airbnb, are you going to use uh, MySQL or Postgres? As the, you know, we'll see. We'll see what's better, but uh, we will not have our own database, right? And DeFi, you know, that, that's, that's a loaded question. Uh, when we do yield farming, are we doing DeFi? Yes, we're doing. So we're going to use um, systems on DeFi which can grow adoption and which can grow the project. So, yes, we're doing DeFi by doing, you know, liquidity providers. That's DeFi, right, isn't it? So, yes, we do it. So the new questions which came in after we started. Ninjas, how does high Ethereum gas affect trips? It kills it. Uh, again, if you want to buy a million dollars of whatever on Uniswap, you know, $10 gas fee, who cares? If you want to book a place for the weekend, which costs you $100 and there's $10 in gas fees and then there's $2 uh, or $5 for a claim and whatever, it kills it. You're not going to use it. So with these gas fees, marketplaces are dead in the water. They won't even start. So either Ethereum will um, scale or side chains will so we bring a solution. XDAI could be a solution. Who knows, right? Uh, but yeah, gas fees kills, you know, you have to see it like this. With gas fees at, let's say, average $10, you can move a million dollars. So you can move $100,000, maybe $10,000, right? 
uh, with gas fees at one cent, you can do everything. So gas fees define what's affordable, right? Marketplaces are not affordable today, unless these marketplaces sells you Lamborghinis. Then yeah, you can buy a Lamborghini on a marketplace on Ethereum, no problem. You can book a place. Can you book villas? Yeah, you could maybe book villas for thousands of dollars, but you know then you don't have the mass the mass adoption, the critical mass. So yeah, the, the infrastructure is not there. The building we are building doesn't have enough water. <clears throat> it's still too little. We don't. We cannot give power showers to our, uh, you know, the people staying in the building. That's the idea. Let me see the next questions. There you are. So, let me see, by the way, if this question is in, in YouTube. I don't think so, but uh, uh, nope. Actually, yeah. Richard, oh, Richard made the same question before. So, Giovanni, Joe Trips, how will Trips survive the multiple Trips clone with suddenly born when the structure for a full functioning Web3 OTA will be there? So, as I was mentioning, the day Trips becomes a platform which actually works, there's going to be clones. So, it's like asking, how will Uniswap? survive when sushi swap is born very hard question sushi swap sucked away a lot of liquidity remember one billion liquidity goes to half a billion no what i'm talking about one billion went to two billion because people started far uh, liquidity in uniswap and then they dragged it out and it went down and then sushi swap made mistakes let's say dragged the pool pull the rack and then the liquidity went back to uniswap and then two days ago i think it went again from four billion because in the meantime it grew to two billion so what does this teach you in an environment where everything is growing all right when trips is going to go from one to two to four and then somebody's going to copy it's going to like go down to, to two and then go to eight and the other ones so it's going to grow anyway right because the whole system is going. The whole ecosystem is going to grow, and yes, they're going to, there's going to be fights and the availability attacks, but the whole system is going to grow. So I'm not worried. Actually, I'm really happy. Somebody comes in, does something different, improves on some aspects we haven't focused on, and then we can take their code. See, like Bitcoin. You know the story of Bitcoin and Zcash. Like Bitcoin saw Zcash making a clone. Trying to do zero knowledge proof, make a mistake because of the on the white paper there was a bug, and Bitcoin learned from Zcash that you don't do these kind of things. So a whole optional way to go to get privacy was was put aside because they saw what can happen. So, and what I'm seeing here is like this is gonna go so fast, and it, the, the innovation is gonna be so fast that. Centralized OTAs won't stand a chance because they have these decoders, you know, going to the office in the morning and, and coding, and they have to pay them every single line of code. Why we are in the open world, and the, the 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 innovation is just too fast for them to catch up unless they follow suit and they start coding open too, or getting open source code and use it. So the the question is not like somebody will copy and steal away stuff from us yes but we will all be all be growing together great i think we are done with the questions um if you have questions this is the good moment because otherwise we're gonna close let me see if there's some questions around Okay, while I'm looking at um, uh, 
Okay, there were some comments, but no, no different questions. Great. Um, we're gonna move now to 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 Discord, where I'm gonna ask a few questions, and the the people reply correctly. Um, there we get some trips. So we're gonna play a little bit with this. So if you are not in Discord, you can click on the Join Discord red button, and and I'll see you there. Thank you, Richard. Yes, uh, I've all, I'll tell you a little, a little story here. When I started going around trip Italy first to explain trips, and I, the approach was this: very honest and, and very open. I've been no, I've been in Milan, uh, been in Torino, been in the north, and then when I got to Rome, people started saying, "Nice presentation, but you are a bit too honest. You you are you have to sell a bit better, right? Because you know you have to sell a bit better." And uh, I said, well, no, I can't. You know, I just say things uh, the way I, I can tell. I cannot change my communication according to the seed I am, right? But then the people who, like the city which, which was more successful for us was Rome itself. They were probably taken aback from the fact that somebody can be as open and uh, as, as I was uh, because they used to be sold to, right? So I don't want to sell you trips. Guys, this is... This is a project where I can guarantee you one thing. You're going to learn a lot. And this knowledge is going to be very precious in the next years. TRIPS itself is a project. We don't know where it's going to go, right? We don't know. 99% of what TRIPS is going to be doesn't depend on TRIPS. It depends on the whole ecosystem, right? So take it as a chance to learn. Yeah, maybe you can bet by, by earning some TRIPS. Maybe you can even buy some TRIPS. Don't buy too many. Don't risk too much of your own money on these tokens. Yeah, they could go up a lot and they could disappear in six months, right? So don't invest money in trips which you cannot lose. Try to earn because while you're earning, you're learning. So it's, it, this is a safe bet, right? Now that we have the tokens on the exchanges, try to earn them, right? Because if you earn them by working, you're also making trips a bigger project, right? Buy them if you have money you can lose. Uh, it's betting money, right? Yeah, it could go up. It could go up. Why not? It would probably go up at least a little bit, right? But we don't know in the long term. Uh, so yeah, let's let's be honest with each other, and then we have a long because we have a very long a, a long road ahead of us. It's years, right? So let's be honest with each other. Let's not risk too much. Let's learn. This is the learning moment for all of us. Okay, and you learn by doing. So. Help trips, learn, and, and let's go ahead together. And we're going to be ready. Things you learn in trips are going to be very useful when somebody else comes to you and say, you want to buy this token. And you're going to know how to judge it, right? So let's have this approach. We're going to go very far ahead together, I promise. Okay. Thank you, everyone. It was great. And see you in Discord. Bye-bye. Ciao.